Good morning, Minecraft, and welcome to this epic channel spotlight with a man I met when he only had 400 subs, and now he has grown to over a full 1,100. Welcome, everyone. Here is Zuljin. Hey, everybody. How are you doing? We're doing actually great, Will. due to the amazing features of the 1.3 uh, update. We're here in your world. This is Cobbletown from the Cobblestone Chronicles. Right. This is just one of the amazing shows on your YouTube channel. Thanks, man. So you want to tell us? You want to tell us a little about uh, how you got started on uh, YouTube? Sure, man. Um, I used to watch uh, this cat named Quickshot14 do an um, an LP in Alpha, and as soon as I got interested in the game, I thought that was really, really cool because I was big on building stuff ever since I was a kid and uh, did a lot of retro uh, games as well. I've always been a big gamer, but I never really had anybody to play with in games. A lot of my friends just aren't gamers. So I figured oh, wow. that this YouTube thing would be a really, really good thing to try to, to get some people on board and maybe find some friends on it. And I happen to find a lot. Oh, yeah. You're definitely doing really well. Um... Honestly, one of my favorite channels to watch now. Thanks, man. Um, several of mine have, several of my past channels that I loved watching have uh, discontinued. So I've had to find new ones and uh, found your channel. <laughs> right. So you want to tell us a little bit about uh, Cobblestone Chronicles and uh, show us around town at the same time? Yeah. Um, Cobblestone Chronicles was uh, my single player world that I started a uh, long time ago. I called it Let's Play Minecraft with Zul'jin, actually, <laughs> when I just started. But um, I wanted to give the server some identity. Forgive the intruder. Um, I wanted to give the server some identity. Uh, um, I'm sorry, the show some identity. Right. So I started thinking, and they had a lot of epic names already for series, but uh, and when when you're starting in Minecraft, all you do is form cobblestone and build with it. <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> it's like the easiest resource to get. So I, um, I I figured why not glorify it just so I can get some content out and while I learn how to do this this YouTube thing and the recording. So I um, I thought it would be cool. I, I went to thesaurus.com and started looking up some good uh, plays on words for it, and I just came out with Chronicles for story time. So. It, uh, it worked out pretty well. Oh, yeah. you, you definitely present some amazing stories in your show. Thanks, man. It's, it's story time with Zul'jin. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> right. right. That's the good thing about the single-player world. You can really just kind of let loose and do what you want with it. Um, when you have multiple people around, naturally you interact with them more than the audience that's actually watching you. So it's a little bit more intimate and when people want to get to know an LP or I think that Minecraft's a great platform because um, you build say a lot about you just the way you commentate over them and stuff like that can really um, can really tell people a, a different story about how you think and how you operate so the stories just bring out a personal touch out of it outside of the game and, and, and just the way things are presented in, in builds they're presented to you about your life I never thought people would be interested in my personal life but People started asking, so I started telling. And it kind of just turned into story time. Sometimes. Yeah, and uh, all of that shows in every one of your uh, your series and your episodes. Not just your Minecraft. It's in it's in everything you do. It's it's all pretty cool. So where are we at? This is my craftsman's district, so to speak. I have quite a few tree forms that were inspired by a sumo. Um, what you see to your left is the Asuma's original tree form that I tweaked. Oh, cool. Uh, it's some adjustments so that we can form either birch or the um, the dark wood. And um, I've even got a mason's guild down here that you can um, pretty much mine infinite amount of cobblestone. <laughs> let's let's go check it out. Okay. This and, was uh, one of those builds in the... We'll, um, we'll take a break until we get there and then... We'll pick it up. This is it. Oh, this is it. We're here already. <laughs> yeah, it's not too short. Oh. Uh, the last oh. time I visited somebody's server, there was... Everything was spread all over the place. Uh, I am having wonderful time with doors. <laughs> oh! This is one of the, the... This is one of these machines. I know uh, what this, this is. 
<laughs> this is a dual cobblestone generator. Dual cobblestone generator. There's one that comes vertical that you can see through the glass floor all oh. the way here. And there's one that comes horizontal. And wow. there is a pulse generator right here. And the server resets sometimes. A good friend and subscriber of mine, Gabo King 13 talked to me about the pulse generator. And basically, it starts some clocks downstairs. And I just see top stone generate. And basically, if you take, let me find a tool right quick just so I can show you. If you stand at an angle here on top of the chest, you mine cobblestone in an angled fashion. Right. And all the scraps fall to your sides. And they actually appear right behind you on this collection block. Here, toss me a, toss me a tool. So you got to mine at an angle? Yeah, that's so you don't... There's, if you only had one, you wouldn't be able to mine it. You wouldn't mine as fast. Mm. Because they don't generate as fast. I'm pretty sure there's some new designs out there, but this was one of my first builds. And I'm planning on doing some invites real soon. Not turning it into a server that, that is always on, but I'd like to get some community builds on oh, the server. Oh, nice table concept. Yeah. This is the, um, the guild hall for the Mason's Guild. So I thought this was a pretty cool setup, like a little meeting room. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting idea. Never seen furniture like this before, but... Like I said, it's very cool. Yeah, I like the setup. It looks a little unique. <laughs> very. And outside of... We also passed up the power plant, which doesn't have any practical use except for these lights that you see on the sides of you this is they're they not sensors um, so all of these lights are, are wired up to a day night sensor in your three in sequence actually to provide better block update speed oh cool it's like a sensor array but yeah they're all wired to the same thing this is the enchanters library right to the left of you oh nice enchantment up the ladder, huh? Mm -hmm. And there's just a simple table set up there. Oh. Cool. No automation up here? Nope. Just simple old bookshelves. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you tell us about some of your other shows? Well, what I have right now mainly besides Minecraft is I'm starting a little retro series that I've been doing with some old school like Nintendo and Sega games. Oh, and wow. That is um, that's going on pretty well. I like it. I'm enjoying it a lot. They're very easy to record and they're very satisfying to record because they're kind of allowing me to relive some childhood memories. <laughs> I'm doing a game called Bandit Kings of Ancient China right now, which is... It's a, it's a turn-based strategy game, which hardly anybody has really thought about before, um, before say, like StarCraft and things of that nature. Oh. A lot, a lot of the, the, they call it real-time strategy now, but mm -hmm. turn-based strategy was before that, I guess you could say. And um, it, it's a pretty cool concept, you know, but it's, it's, it's got a different kind of audience. And I'm enjoying, these classic gamers are probably more passionate about classic gaming than some of the Minecraft is off. I'm, I'm still a huge gamer at heart, so when I don't, I don't have the inspiration to build, um, that's one of the things that I like to do. And uh, the classic games just do it real well. And a lot of these guys that collect classic games and stuff like that, I talk with them and, um, you know, just a real, real cool bunch of people. So what is this unfinished, unroofed this thing it's <laughs> this is the tavern and inn <laughs> i don't know what i'm gonna call it yet but i just hired a bartender for it <laughs> okay we're currently, we're currently taking applications for a receptionist and we're putting a second floor onto it to support some of the people that want to sleep while they're working in town without actually going to their house which i don't have a section for yet But it's 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 well equipped with a bar, and we're currently working on the reception area. So the reception area is going to be this here. This is huge. 
things. Yeah, it's, it was a really, really fun build so far, man. And I'm still running default right now. Um, I haven't updated my 1.3 jar yet, so it's still still got default textures. Oh, cool. Yeah, and look, this is one of your designs, my friend. Look at the stairs, the signs on them. <laughs> oh, well, you know who I got that from. Uh-uh. I got that from Armitage, actually. Yeah, I, I, I tried it the other day, and I liked the way that it came out. It just gave it a little bit more presence. So I said, why not? Even though I think I want to change these out to birch the oh, stairs. Yeah. Out, I yeah. made the case Signs case. with at symbols or pound symbols actually look pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, pretty cool stuff. Gives it a nice texture. I did that with uh, chairs and tables and stuff. Right. Another I still difference. can't get through these doors. <laughs> I need to put a delay on them, I guess. Okay, we are inside of your... What do you call this? This is Zuljin's Manor. Zuljin's Manor. It's the mayor's house slash base. <laughs> <laughs> the main base. Yeah. I remember when everything used to be... Uh, everything in, in Minecraft used to be called a base. Right. I'm going to build my base. Yeah. Everything still kind of is, too, but I'm starting to get a little more domesticated because just the simple underground base is a little too gray. So I'm starting to incorporate some, some real-life living elements, I think. Like up here, this is the living quarters, and I have like a little lookout, and I kind of incorporated the, the kitchen idea, even though in my oh. old texture pack this looked a lot different and a lot better. <laughs> so it needs to be revamped. So you were talking about uh, invites to the server. Um, how is that going to work? I haven't ironed out every detail yet, but I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be running small contests for um, different amounts of virtual emeralds. Cool. And I'm going to physically collect emeralds in-game. And when the contest winners accumulate um, a certain number of them, they'll be able to use those amounts to buy plots that I'm going to set up in town. And these plots are going to come with um, kind of like an allowance with um, some money that you can spend in the market district that I'm currently putting together. And that's going to enable you to buy tools and different amounts of resources and different items to help you build on your plot. Because if I do want to invite people, this world has always been legit and always been um, vanilla, so to speak, except for a rope mod that I tried in my very early days. <laughs> I want everybody to be able to come and keep legit, so I don't want to give anybody anything that's been uh, no give commands, no you know, falsely generated products, anything like that. I want everybody to have to earn it, and that's why the Craftsman's District is set up the way it is, so they can form free resources if they like. I remember you did something like this in the past. You had a uh, big party invite and did some massive landscaping. Huh? I did a very, very large party invite and I think only three or four people got to actually come. But over there where you see the sheer cliffside against uh on the left, all of that used to be healed stretched oh, wow. in front of the tavern. I called it Operation Cleanup and I ran a contest. Now, my internet was bad then, and I hosted a local server through Hamachi, but we did get a few people to come on, and um, a bunch of us just got together and TNT'd and out <laughs> the side, which took forever, but it was, it was, it was really fun. Yeah, yeah it sounds like a lot of fun. So is there anything else uh, you want to show off on the, in the, around the town? Um, I don't know. I got a couple of neat form ideas. If you want to see a drive-through read form, if it's going to work. Drive-through form. <laughs> Is that like a drive-through wedding? Well, kind of. Yeah, it's it it looks a lot less glamorous than Las Vegas, but <laughs> uh, what you what you end up getting in Minecraft, especially when you watch YouTubers like I do, you see people that have just incredibly complex, efficient builds that yield hundreds and hundreds of resources well and then they break in the next update right and <laughs> it doesn't work perfectly but what this is is a drive-through sugarcane form okay if there are a couple well, this of nice skylight for some reason 
I think we had fixed last time. There we go. And what ends up going on here is you basically take a minecart around and it gives you the ability to collect all and harvest the reeds when the pistons push out and you ride it kind of like a roller coaster. So it's not this, you know, 256 high reed form that yields 8 billion things, but <laughs> you never have to replant reeds. And if you want to get in the cart, I'll show you kind of how it works. All right, let's give it a... Just click the button, and you might want to hold forward just in case that uh, anything goes Where's wrong. Where's your button? There but, it is. There you go. And there you go. It should take you all around, up top. And these were freshly harvested, so... <laughs> And it brings you right back down. <laughs> wow. So it's a fun, it was a fun project, and it's, it's, it makes it fun to, to harvest reeds that way. Definitely very cool. Sand grows them faster now from what I've heard. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. This is my lower level access. Okay. And I wanted to do something different. This was inspired by Terraria, had underground. Oh. So I wanted yeah. to build like an underground arboretum um, and make it a, like just a subterranean wild place, you know. <laughs> and they're more wild. Than it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm right now I'm wishing I had a better texture pack because the glass is so default rough. glass and it's got that. Right. Stuff in the way. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to see through it. And I guess the last stop of Cobbleton is my uh, my underwater uh, dock. And this is pretty easy here. You put a boat on the ground. You can just kick it off. Okay. Go. And then right click while you're in it and just hold space. <laughs> nice. And if you take a right, you'll see how you can go right back into it. Take a right? Oh. Yeah, back towards the, the I'm town. I'm facing the other way. <laughs> mm. Your head's all backwards. Boats are still all glitchy. Yeah. Yeah, you're backwards. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna hurt your neck like that, dude. <laughs> All right. Very yep. cool. Yep. So, what uh, what future plans do you have for your channel? Well, the retro series, um, I'm really gonna take off with that. I'm gonna be doing a bunch of RPGs and strategy games from a lot of the old systems really, really soon. Um, I am now. <laughs> I'm now finished with all of the Diablo, which I just got finished with, with a good friend of mine, Omega Rainbow. And uh, Diablo 3? Mm-hmm. How'd that turn out? Uh, it turned out great, man. We had a good time. Um, not a whole lot of audience for Diablo 3. I think it was just overdone, and there's a lot of hate on the game itself, but <laughs> it, we just cut up and had a good time. So it was a great platform for that. And uh, I'm still using it here and there to go with you and some of the other guys like Cerberus Black and UK and... We have a good old time and Inferno dying too, you know. Right. Other than that, I'm going to start a new series really soon from the Geomine server, which I was invited to recently by Asuma. Oh, cool. And I'm also going to continue the fan service stuff right now. It's more of the, a talk show and open platform, but it was just announced yesterday that Good wants to start touring some of our builds week by week, every week, and it looks like I'm going to have the fourth or fifth slot, so... In four to six weeks, um, Gooch should just be doing a, 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 a spotlight on me for his channel. So that should be really, really interesting. Are you going to be recording at the same time? Oh, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's so look, look for some uh, cameos from Gooch on your channel. Yeah, definitely. That's, yeah. That'll be pretty cool. So what, hey. do, you got, what do you got ready? Uh, what do you got built on the fan server? Um, I have an old school plantation home that I'm still working on the insides of, but it's like a real southern build. It looks pretty good. I like the way it came wow. out. I haven't done a whole lot of work on the fan survey because I really concentrate on the community stuff on there more. Um, we currently have a talk show that we're doing every Friday that we live stream. 
Um, it's just sitting down talking about games. A couple <laughs> ago, we did, um, what did we do? We did MMORPGs, and uh, last week, which was just the other day, we ended up doing um, uh, indie games. Yeah, I got a I got a chance to see the the indie game uh, topic that never really got off the ground. <laughs> no. We uh we really really go off topic a lot, but uh, it's it's rather interesting and sometimes some f- just most of the time it's just funny stuff that happens. It's not build related, but it's a good platform for us all to get together and the fans to get together and interact with. It. All right, well that's pretty cool. Now I got to think of some way to end this. <laughs> um, you can we can go back to where we started and you can say good night. I could try. How do I get out of here? All right. We'll be seeing you. Right, Peace. Man. Peace out. Thank you. So, yeah, if you know anybody looking for a job, I need a receptionist. <laughs> <laughs> Off of camera, I would suggest going with a snowman or a, uh, a an iron golem. <laughs> Right, as a receptionist. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, bouncer too. Right. Get a snowman and a and an iron golem running around in there. Mm-hmm.